Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye. So, uh, a while back I got a request uh, for a uh, lightning video for a t-shirt. Uh, this is a design that I've done in the past and in describing how to do the lightning design on a t-shirt I got inspired to do another one. So, I got in, tied up a t-shirt, and then set it aside, let it dry, and I came back today to go ahead and dye that said t-shirt, this one right here. And lo and behold, I noticed that due to a glitch in the matrix, for whatever reason, my video of tying up this t-shirt, uh, somehow it's not there. So... <laughs> Anyway, so what I'm doing today is I'm going to go ahead and fold this one up in a similar manner to this one. And then I will go ahead and since this here has to sit and dry for a few days, I will be dyeing this t-shirt. But I'm going to fold it up in the same manner. So we're doing a lightning design. So basically what I'm doing, uh, I have a t-shirt that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out so it's barely damp. Uh, soda ash is something that's required for using Procyon dyes. It's what activates them. So I do have a beginner's uh, playlist. I will link that just in case you're just getting started and finding me. Um, but for now we're going to do this lightning design. So I'm using a washable marker. This one here is a Crayola brand. I don't know if you can see that on there or not, but this is a Crayola brand. I just found it on Amazon. It's a washable marker. So I have my t-shirt here that's soaked in soda ash and I'm just going to basically draw kind of a random lightning bolt across the t-shirt. That just gives me the idea of where I'm folding. I'm not going to do an exact pleated fold. Normally I kind of line things up and I like to get everything nice and precise. But since this here is lightning, lightning is more random. So to add to the effect, I'm not going to do an exact straight pleat. I'm going to do kind of a scrunch pleat where some of my lines are going to be, or my folds are going to be taller. Some are going to be short. Some are going to be kind of gathered up a little bit weird. Uh, this here just adds to it. I like to make my pleats tall enough because since I'm going all the way across diagonally across the tee and then I'm going to tie it up with sinew. I don't want to have the t-shirt be too wide so if you do little short pleats you get a really wide pleat and then when you try to condense that sometimes then it will buckle up. I had just a little bit of folding on this one so but it's it's pretty flat in there so what I'm going to do is fold this one and I use a little bit taller pleats in it. But like I say, they're going to be kind of random. And like I say, I'm not doing precise. Sometimes I'm reaching out here pinching and twisting a little bit. This here is just going to kind of add to the effect of my lightning. You can, if you want to, do an exact pleat on this. I'm not trying to tell you you can't do that. I'm just saying that I am not doing that. So... Hopefully this here is going to add to my effect. So this here is a much quicker pleat too as you're going across because you're not worried about precisely lining things up. So as you can see, I'm just kind of pinching and grabbing and bringing these lines in. And there you saw it start to buckle a little bit on me. So I kind of line some more pleats up. And then I'm pressing on this here just to see if it's going to buckle on me when I put my sinew on. The way I like to do the sinew is wrap enough extra on there that I can kind of hold that in place. And then I do have a video on using uh, sinew and kite string. Uh, so I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. But basically what I'm doing is I'll wrap this across and then with this thumb, I'm holding it down flat to the table. I stretch some out, and then I hold this side down flat to the table. What this allows me to do is just slide that right underneath so I don't have to try to pick up the t-shirt as I'm wrapping it. And that just helps keep the sinew lined up in one place. 
The other thing I do is I will wrap around two times. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will go ahead and start to pull this tight while I am pressing this down to keep it flat. I want to kind of condense that as much as I can before I do my actual wrap. And then I'm going to wrap and try to be very precise with lining this up so all of my sinew is sitting in the same line. I don't want it on either side of this line. Uh, the lightning, I want to get as thin of a white line as possible here. So I'm wrapping this all in the same place. I'm making sure that as I wrap this, my end here, I'm just kind of going over top of that as I wrap this in. So I will wrap this three times. And then what I usually will do is line this up. I'll hold down with one hand. I have a very short, short pull run here. And then I can line this up, hold my whole hand on my dowel here with the sinew coming out between my fingers. And then I can hold that and just press, uh, uh, just pull. And I'm pulling back gently. I'm pulling with my arm so that if this sinew does break, my arm is just gonna stride, slide straight back. You don't wanna pull this way where you're pulling, it's gonna go up towards your face or towards your body. So the best way is just to kind of line things up and then situate yourself in a position where you can hold with one hand and pull with the other straight away from your body. So if it breaks, anyways, enough on that. I'm gonna wrap this one more time. Whenever I pull this, I can always, I can usually feel that sinew lock into place for me as it tightens down. That waxiness of the sinew <clears throat> keeps the the line or locks the line in place when you pull it tightly. So I'm going to do that one more time here. So I do another three wraps, hold and pull. And as I pull, I want to feel that kind of lock in place there. And then at this point, <clears throat> I have my tail for my initial wrap. I'm going to cut that off short so that doesn't confuse me later. And then I'm going to leave enough of a long <clears throat> string on this that I can gather it or grab it later to unwrap it. And I like to usually tie a big knot in there. So I'll just usually make a loop, wrap it up a few times, tuck this in string back through the loop. And that makes a nice big knot here on the end. Otherwise, this end can fray and tangle in, and it makes it more difficult to unwrap it later. So tying a knot just helps with your unwrapping. So what I'm going to do is leave this to dry. So this here is, like I say, just like this one here. I'll flip that around. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and switch over and use this dry one now. And I'm going to just lightly scrunch this up and then tie that with kite string. But this one I'm going to set it aside and let it dry for a few days and then that one will be dyed up later. But for today we're just going to dye this one up. So what I'm going to do now is I have my kite string and you could have tied uh, scrunch this up while it was dry but it'll dry faster if you leave this un untied like this and really you don't have to tie this back up but I like to have a little bit of extra color in my design so I'm going to dye the whole thing in light blue and then I'm going to dye it in black and the light blue is going to soak in here into these creases, but it's also going to soak in close around my sinew tie here. And then hopefully we'll have that nice white line under the lightning.
Okay, we're back. So I got my t-shirt. Like I say, it's been sitting and it's completely dried out after I tied it with the sinew. Uh, so sometimes when you try to dye something that's been completely dried, the dye wants to roll off rather than soak in. So what I do is I keep a bottle of soda ash handy. This here is just my regular soda ash. I've just put it into a spray bottle and then I just lightly spray the tops of the folds. And what this does is it kind of helps break the surface tension and allow the dye to just soak in rather than roll off. So I recommend keeping a bottle of soda ash <clears throat> on hand for the occasions when you want to let something dry and anytime I tie something with sinew it's best to let it dry because you're going to get better dye saturation in your deeper folds there. So what I'm going to do is just take this blue uh, turquoise uh, I've lightened it up uh, I don't know the mixture it was turquoise and I added water to it just to make a lighter blue and now what I'm going to do is I'm just adding it directly right over top of the sinew line here. I want that to soak in. If it actually soaks into my white line, that would be fine because, like I say, I am trying to do lightning. Uh, but at the very least, what it's going to do is soak in around that sinew. So it's going to have, I should have what, a uh, white line and then light blue on both sides and that's going to make my lightning look very electric compared to the rest of the t-shirt which I'm going to dye in cobalt, deep purple, and black. So, but also I'm going to put a little bit of this blue out here in the rest of the t-shirt. So really I'm soaking this part here because I want it to soak in but I want to dye the whole rest of the t-shirt also because I want just little bits of that blue to shine through in my lightning design. And this effect works great with any colors. Uh, I've done it in shades of uh, green before, so then I'll use a light green. So basically what I do uh, for this, whatever color scheme I want to use, I put the lightest color over top of the sinew and then over the t-shirt here. And then I put my darker colors over top. So if I'm doing uh, this in greens, then I would put like a bright green here and my darker greens and then some blacks and darker blues around the rest of it. Um, you could do it in fire colors. So I would put yellow here and then put my reds and orange and fuchsias around the rest of the t-shirt. Anyway, so there's lots of different color schemes, so play and have fun with that. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly coat this in my various colors. So I always start with the lightest colors first and then I work up from there. Uh, the next two colors I'm putting on are deep purple and cobalt. So I'm just going to kind of splatter those around in the same fashion. Uh, I'm going to not put it directly over top of my line. <clears throat> I'm going to put it on both sides. And hopefully that will just make that lightning part stand out more. I'm not heavily saturating this. I'm just kind of coating it with the purple. Mostly because I want to get all of my colors mixed in here. So I don't want to do any one of them completely solid. Alright, last color is I'm putting a coat of black on. <clears throat> this here I have written on here old, so I'm not sure just how black this black will be, but we're going to test it out. <clears throat> so this one here, I'm coming right up to my line here, but not quite over top, and I'm just going to coat the whole thing, top and bottom. Okay, so there is the T. <clears throat> I'm going to set this aside to batch for 48 hours and then I will wash it, so stay tuned. So 
here is my lightning design. Alrighty. Let's get this. You guys still here? The show is over. It's time to go home. Okay, maybe just one more tea. Hold on a second. <clears throat> so, I guess you guys knew that in my inspiration for doing that lightning tea that I might have even more inspiration. So the other inspiration that came to me is what if I did it on a black t-shirt? So basically what I'm going to do is pretty close to the same process onto a black t-shirt <clears throat> that I did on the white t-shirt. So, but I'm going to start out by tying it up in the same fashion and then I'm going to remove color and then add color back in. So, on a black t-shirt, my washable marker isn't going to make the same kind of a mark that I can see. I mean, I can kind of see it there, but not very easily. But, a dry erase crayon will make a nice mark on there that I can see and fold. So, what I have here are dry erase crayons. That's the important part, is the dry erase. I don't know that regular crayons will wash out, but dry erase crayons will wash out of your t-shirt with hot water. So I can draw on this and then just through my regular laundry the wax from the dry erase crayons and these here are Crayola brand I just bought it on Amazon but the important part is the dry erase Sorry, I don't mean to stress that so much, but I have lots of people to ask questions. Okay, so basically I'm going to draw the same thing. I'm going to go from the one shoulder down to the opposite corner here. I don't have the camera set up so that you can see the whole draw. I apologize for that, but this is what we have. So I'm just drawing this kind of similar to what I did on the t-shirt. It's just giving me a rough guideline to go across here. I don't need to be very precise with my line. I just want to have something that goes diagonally that I can kind of follow across my t-shirt here. So I just drew that line just all the way across here. And then I'm going to fold it up in a similar fashion doing what I call a scrunch pleat. So a, a pleat is where I'm doing very precise folds and I'm lining my lines up and I'm keeping this line straight on top. A scrunch pleat is a little bit more random. So I'm grabbing bigger hunks of fabric. My pleats sometimes are going to be tall, sometimes they're going to be short. And also sometimes I will pinch here and kind of twist and bring it in. What that's going to do is just kind of give the, the lightning bolt a little bit of extra flair to it. That's how I like to do it. So I'm just going to do kind of tall pleats across here and I'm just pinching them up and lining them up. Uh, if you do too short of a pleat then you get too wide of an area here. If this here is too wide then when you tie it with the sinew you risk it buckling up on you. So I'm doing kind of tall pleats here as I bring this in and like I say, I'm not being exact and precise. I'm just kind of folding this up, going across randomly. The line is there mostly just as a guideline to direct me across the diagonal of the t-shirt. So, there is my fold. And we're going to tie that up with sinew in the same fashion.
Okay, there's the black tea. And the reason why on the white tea <clears throat> I left it untied was so that it could dry out <clears throat> faster. The black tea I tied it up now because I'm going to remove color from this and I want to try to remove some of the color from the outer tea but I want to keep a little bit of the black in there hopefully. So I'm going to remove color using Out White Bright. This here I found in the bleach aisle of the laundry detergent or laundry aisles, uh, the bleach section, sorry. And it just comes in a powdered form. Uh, usually what I do is I wear a dust mask when I'm handling this or I work outside or I open a window and that's what I have now and then I'll open a little more here just so that we have a little bit of air circulation in here uh, you don't want to be breathing the <clears throat> fine dust particles there so let me get set up and we'll take some color out of this okay so here we go with the out white bright so usually what I do is I just put it in a basin and I just sprinkle some of it on and I want to make sure that I get a lot of good color removed around where the sinew is so I added extra there I'm just adding a little bit around the whole thing I do want to try to take color out of the whole t-shirt but I do want to leave some black in those sections so anyway we'll see how this goes I heated my water up let it cool down some so we're just gonna go for it I like to pour it on slowly because if you pour too fast I think it moves the out white bright so then the reaction doesn't happen right on the t-shirt so I like to pour it very slowly to let the reaction happen in place there Okay, now it's time to rinse this out. So, basically what I'm going to do is just run water on this and let it soak. And I'm going to swish this around, take it in and out of the water a few times. Change the water until it stops being yellow down in there. And then I'm going to let this dry out. And then we'll dye it. But... Last week, I did the same thing with this black t-shirt. I tied it up the same way as I did the white t-shirt. I removed the color. And this one here, I think I probably got more color out of there than what I wanted. But I can see just a couple spots of black. Hopefully this one, I left more in it. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead and dye this t-shirt. So this one will set aside. Uh, I'll go ahead and finish processing it. And eventually there will be a picture. But for now we're going to finish this video. Out with the Out White Bright. And soaked in soda ash and then dried. And what I'm going to do now is add more dye to it. But to make sure that dye soaks in rather than rolls off, I have soda ash in a squirt bottle here and I'm just going to lightly wet the tops of all these creases. This will help the dye just soak right in rather than roll off. And I'm going to put the same colors on. So I'm going to start with the, the light turquoise like on the last one and I'm going to put it right on top right where the sinew was and then I'm going to add some to the outer parts of the t-shirts
Okay, there you go. We're gonna get both of these batch for 48 hours and then you'll see the results here in about two seconds. Let's see what you got here. So there's our black lightning down through there. I'm sure we'll get better detail when we wash this out. But for now, there's the black lightning. And this here, I know the green always bleeds out to yellow, but it's also possible that that yellow is going to wash out and leave us with white. But either way, I'm happy with either the yellow or the white on this. So, there is another lightning tea. Okay, here's one more. It's not a lightning design, but it was a black t-shirt that had a logo on it that I had tied up and left to dry. So it was sitting here when I was doing the rest of the shirts. So I went ahead and removed the color from it. And then I added color back in. And now you're going to see the results.